People are very bad when it comes to understanding infinity. Let's explore how difficult it is to truly comprehend infinity and extremely large numbers by examining two popular puzzles, chess and the Rubik's Cube. You might be surprised how their mathematical concepts are fascinating in their magnitude. It took a long time before computers finally solved chess and became unbeatable. But why did it take so long? Isn't it just a matter of numbers and combinations? Well, yes, but it's easy to overestimate what a computer is truly capable of. The numbers involved here are not just beyond our imagination, they are beyond the scale of the entire universe. What is the chance that two people will have the exact same game? How long would it take to see every possible combination? Let's find out. Before we jump into details, hi, my name is Pavel, I work in game development and I'm a former graphics developer and researcher holding a PhD in computer science. Imagine a set of all even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, all of them. Let's call it set A. Now imagine set B, the set of all integers, minus 9, 41, 37. What set would you guess is larger, as it has more elements? Uh, we call that cardinality in math. Think about it. Intuitive answer is B is larger than A because it contains everything A does and more. But actually that's not true. Both sets are equally large because both have an infinite number of elements. You can match every even number with an integer one by one forever. And in the world of infinity, that's all that matters. So even if one feels bigger, mathematically they are the same size. Let's look chess. In 1950, American mathematician Claude Shannon calculated what would later became known as the Shannon number, conservative lower bound for the game three complexity of chess. This number is approximately 10 to the power of 120, based on an average of about 30 possible moves per position and a typical game lasting about 40 moves for each player. To put this in perspective, the estimated number of atoms in the observable universe is only about 10 to the power of 80. The game of chess contains possibilities far exceeding the physical components of our entire universe. Let it sink. The growth of chess possibilities is exponential and begins immediately. After the first half move, also known as ply, which simply means a single move by one player in a two-player game, white has 20 possible moves. After black respawns, two plies, there are 400 possible positions. By the fourth ply, there are 197 thousands possible position. And by the third ply, just five full moves into the game, there are over 69 billion possible games. This rapid expansion of possibilities illustrates why chess has remained intellectually challenging for centuries, despite its relatively simpler rules. Shannon also estimated the number of possible chess positions, rather than complete games, at approximately 3.7 times 10 to power 43. This distinction is important because many different move sequences can lead to identical positions, but the number of possible distinct games dwarf even this enormous figure. While chess complexity might seem unparalleled, Rubik's Cube presents its own mathematical challenge, invented by Erna Rubik, who reportedly didn't initially know if his creation could even be solved. The cube has approximately 43 quintillion possible combinations. This is often written as 4.3 times 10 to the power of 19, which, while considerably smaller than the Shannon number, still exceeds human intuition. The Rubik's Cube complexity arises from its simple design. Six faces with nine squares, each that can be arranged in various patterns. What makes the cube fascinating is that, despite this enormous number of combinations, any configuration can be solved in 20 moves or fewer, a property known as the God's number that was proven through computer analysis. What's particularly interesting about the Rubik's Cube is that despite having 43 quintillion possibilities, humans have developed algorithms that can solve any configuration without memorizing each possible state. These algorithms, like CFOP or the beginner's method, break down the solving process into more manageable steps. Given these astronomical numbers, what are the chances that two chess games would be identical from start to finish? This question relates to a variation of the famous birthday problem in probability theory. Coincidences occur more frequently than our intuition suggests. For chess with 10 up to 120 possible games, we might assume duplicates would be virtually impossible. However, the mathematics of probability tells us otherwise. Using probability theory, we can calculate that the chances of finding duplicate games arises much faster than intuitive expectation as the number of games increases. 
In a simplified model, where we assume each game is randomly selected from all possible games, the probability of at least one duplicate pair in a set of k games is approximately equal to 1 minus e raised to the power of negative k times k minus 1 divided by 2 times 10 to the power of 120, which is Shannon number. In reality, chess games aren't randomly distributed among all possibilities. Opening theory, optimal play and human preferences make certain move sequences much more common. This is why chess databases do contain identical games, particularly in high-level play, where grandmasters occasionally played out the same moves in pre-arranged rows. For the Rubik's Cube, the probability calculation follows similar principles. With 4.3 times 10 to 19 possible combinations, the chance of two people randomly generating the same configuration is astronomically low, but not zero. However, because humans tend to follow similar solving patterns, the probability of two solution paths being identical increases significantly. Thus, even in systems with astronomical possibilities, duplicates are not only possible, they became statistically likely as numbers grow. While pure randomness suggests near zero chances of identical outcomes, real world behavior introduces patterns and preferences that significantly raise the odds. Now, let's consider an even more mind bending question. How many games would be necessary to see every possible combination for both chess and the Rubik's Cube? For chess, with 10 up to 120 possible games, it's beyond practical consideration. If every human who has ever lived estimated that about 100 billion people played one unique chess game every second since the beginning of the universe, approximately 13.8 billion years or 4.35 times 10 to 17 seconds, we would have explored only a fraction of all possible chess games. The numbers become even more staggering when we consider the time required. If we could somehow play 1 billion unique chess games per second, it would still take approximately 10 to 111 seconds, or about 3 times 10 to 103 years. A time spent so vast it makes the age of the universe appear instantaneous by comparison. For the Rubik's Cube, the situation is slightly more manageable, but still beyond practical reach. If 1 billion people each solved a unique Rubik's Cube configuration every second, it would still take about 1.3 million years to explore all possibilities. Total configuration divided by configuration solved per second gives us the total time required. That's 4.3 times 10 to the 19th power divided by 10 to the 9th, which equals 43 billion seconds, which is approximately 1.36 million years. To help comprehend these numbers, we need powerful analogies. If each possible chess game was represented by a single atom, you would need 10 to power 40 universes to contain them all. The Shannon number is also vastly larger than a Google, which gave its name to Google. For the Rubik's Cube, if each configuration was the size of a grain of a sand, approximately 1 cubic millimeter, the pile would be about 43 billion cubic kilometers, enough to cover Earth in a layer 84 kilometers deep. Comprehension of these enormous numbers reveal a fundamental limitation in human cognition. Our brains evolved to handle quantities relevant to survival, counting predators, estimating food supplies, tracking small groups. They simply weren't designed to intuitively grasp numbers with dozens or hundreds of zeros. What's fascinating is that despite our inability to truly comprehend these magnitudes, we can still work with them mathematically. We can calculate, manipulate and derive meaningful conclusions about numbers far beyond our intuitive grasp. This disconnect between our mathematical ability and our intuitive understanding highlights both the power and the limits of the human mind. Next time you play chess or solve a Rubik's Cube, remember that you are engaging with mathematical systems whose complexities exceed the number of atoms in the observable universe. These puzzles serve as tangible gateways to contemplating infinity and extremely large numbers. Our exploration of chess and the Rubik's Cube demonstrates that even seemingly simple systems can generate complexities that exceed our universe's physical resources. It's a humbling reminder of the gap between what we can mathematically describe and what we can truly comprehend. These puzzles offer a glimpse into the infinite while remaining physically finite, bridging the gap between the tangible world we inhabit and the boundless mathematical universe that exists in our collective imagination. That will be all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and want to see more in the future, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.